Do you need to spend a buttload of money to get a showcase PC? Now, does that mean that the PC that you would build is all show and no go? Also no. And right here, this is the proof. This is the all AMD powered Gambius Nesso P1. And not only does it look stunning, but at only $2,400, it is crammed with some absolutely epic parts that you know what, even PCMR Reddit users would get jealous. The best part is that it not only looks good, but later on in this video, we're gonna show you that it absolutely crushes at gaming, all while being somewhat easier on the wallet. So let's dive in and see this all AMD beast get built, which by the way, if you love seeing the latest hardware builds with the latest cases and the latest parts, then you should absolutely like and subscribe. And you know what, nudge that notification bell so that way you don't miss videos like this when they release. But enough, let's get into the build. Why don't we just talk about the parts we're putting inside of this? Cause that's the best thing to do about it. What we're gonna be putting inside of this uh, Gamdius uh, Nesso P1 is we're gonna be using AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, the ASRock B650E Steel Legend Wi-Fi. The graphics card is the ASRock AMD Radeon RX 7900GRE. We've got five terabytes of Patriot Viper VP4300 storage. We've got Viper Elite DDR5, 32 gigs at 6,000 mega transfer. We've got the Gamdius Nesso P1, uh, Lee and Lee Galahad 2 Trinity AIO, which is De definitely overkill for the this particular G uh, CPU. And then we have the RG Strix 850 watt white edition. We've got some uh, Asia Horse white cable extensions, and then we're gonna be using Lee and Lee SL Infinity fans to kind of get the whole thing uh, polished and making it look very, very good. So, so here we go, Ryzen 7. So there's our one terabyte right there. Quality M.2 install right there. Four terabytes. 98.4 on the first one, already done. 97. Ooh, 101.1. Thermal paste. I'm just gonna assume you just put it across the top of there. Cause it should pull the extra. Boom. Okay, here we go, guys. Time to get this built. So we're gonna take off the top, which, oh, it looks, it just popped up. Woo. Man, that is, that is hefty. Super deep insert. So you could do like an extra thick radiator for your 360 here at the top. So right here at the top, there's a little pull. Oh, no. Guys. There's a button. There's a button. What? That is cool. Oh, that's nice. It comes off very easily. I like that. Okay, and then this just, okay, just pops off like that. Okay, well, let's get the MOBO in. Pop this in here. That's looking good in there, I have to say. Okay, I got some white Fantex fans. Here we go. And they have a short cable. Should be nice for getting up to them, so. We got all our cables now. Okay, we're at the end, guys. It's GPU, PSU, we're done. The ASRock Steel Legend 7900 GRE. Look at that, it matches everything, guys. Look at That's that. Very, oh, very nice. No, no, it goes like that, okay. Get that plugged in. The build is officially done. Gamados Nesso P1 completed. Gam, sorry, Gambius. I, All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. And this, 
That is a beautiful looking PC. I'm gonna yeah, be honest. Yeah. Okay, so before jumping too much into performance and everything else about this build, let's just say how much fun it was to build inside of the Gambius Nesso P1. And did you see that the case basically has a button that makes the front pop open? I mean, a button! That makes it worth it right there. But in all honesty, there is a lot to really love about this case. The polygon type shape really kind of makes it look different than other dual chamber cases on the market. The case also has a lot of quality of life features for things like cable management, a little tray for like those nice little RGB fan warts and a removable tray for basically AIO installation and a cool place to hide fans down at the bottom. And it really does make it a breeze to work with. In fact, if you like this build and you wanna follow along with me during the live stream, I try very hard to show step-by-step -step on how to build something like this. You can absolutely do this right here. So let's kick off this video with performance with our first stop along this performance train being airflow and thermals. For airflow, we have two Fantex 140 millimeter fans in the bottom of the case, and we have three reverse Lee & Lee SL120 Infinity fans in the back for intake, while the Lee & Lee AIO and the rear Lee & Lee SL120 Infinity fan are actually the exhaust. Given the heavier amount of intake fans versus exhaust, you'll see that we actually end up with a slightly positive pressure situation that's gonna be great for minimizing dust. Let's jump to temperatures, by the way, and let's kick things off with CPU. We're gonna show you a whole range here, from idle to gaming, all the way up to CPU load. Though this CPU is really targeted at gaming, it's not like you couldn't do some rendering and productivity tasks, especially as a content creator. So starting off with idle, things are looking nice and frosty at 36 degrees, and for gaming temps, it's kind of staying that way, averaging at about 60 degrees Celsius during all of our gaming benchmarks. For full load, hitting a Cinebench score of 17769 in R23, we saw things peak out at 79 degrees, so zero issues whatsoever. Given this is a 360 millimeter AIO, you could very easily, and follow the same directions that I was showing in the live stream, upgrade this to a 7900X, a 7950X, or an X3D equivalent, and still have really great temps. If you wanted to spend the extra money. Well, what about the ASRock Steel Legend Radeon RX 7900 GRE then, Roby? How did that do thermally? Well, given the direct airflow from these two Fantex fans, pretty dang good. And it's another one of the things I really love about this case. For idle, the GPU was chilling at a nice and cool 32 degrees Celsius, and when either gaming or under load, we saw it pop all the way up to a whopping 59 degrees Celsius, which is fantastic and leaves you headroom for overclocking and tweaking the GPU if you want to. So very solid thermals for both CPU and GPU, and given we have one of the best gaming CPUs, the 7800X3D, paired with AMD's newest GPU, the 7900GRE, the question is now, how does it actually do in gaming? Well, the wait is over. Well, kicking it off with Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p with ray tracing and ultra and FSR 2.1 set to auto, we saw Cyberpunk 2077 hit in a nice and solid 68 FPS. If you kill ray tracing, this becomes a whole lot higher, but 68 FPS for a single player Cyberpunk game with all the bells and whistles is completely fine, and it's awesome to get to enjoy that experience on an AMD Radeon card. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 5, again at 1440p with graphics set to extreme, FSR 2.2 set to auto, we saw 153 frames per second. For Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, again, 1440p extreme graphics, FSR 2.1 set to balance, and fluid motion frames on, given we're talking about single player, we saw 400 frames per second for single player campaign, which is bonkers. Great job, fluid motion frame implementation in Call of Duty. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider 1440p with highest graphical presets and XESS set to balance, you're looking at 181 frames per second. And finally, rounding out our single player games, we have Tiny Tina's Wonderlands with graphics set to badass and FSR 2.0 set to balance, we saw 177 FPS. Now let's talk about MP for a second, kicking it off with Apex Legends with graphics maximized for competitive gameplay. We saw 272 FPS at 1440p. For some Call of Duty multiplayer action, of course, optimizing for maximum frame rate and not using frame generation or anything that ruins the experience, we're looking at 237 FPS, which is pretty dang good. And finally, Fortnite, again, graphics set to competitive, maximizing frame rate and almost just, you know what? It's garbage. 426 FPS. So gaming, check. Thermals, check. Fun build experience, check. 
and all in a great looking package that doesn't cost over $3,000. The other really cool thing about this build is that if you wanted to go up or down in hardware, you could absolutely do that because the cooling and power option for this build can power all the way up to a 7900 XTX or 4080 Super and cool up to a 7950X or a 14900K. Though Intel and Nvidia options will be different setups, unfortunately, and you will not be able to follow along with the live stream. But there you have it, the Gambius Nesso P1 all AMD gaming powered build. So what do you think? Do you like the build? Does it actually look good? And what would you change? Let us know all that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification each time we post videos like this right here on Robitech. Also, if you have questions or you wanna discuss builds or maybe have this built yourself, etc., head on over to discord.gg slash Robitech. And you know what? You might just make another tech friend. Also, feel free to follow us on all the other channels at Robitech absolutely everywhere. That is it for me. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you on the next video.